Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Augie. Um, doing a little uh, behind the scenes here for 10 years in the making, the BQAC, a feature length film documentary that I'm working on. And just want you to check out what I'm doing. So, enjoy. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Augie Rodriguez over at AR Films. And with today's vlog, I'm going to tell you and give you some tips about how I created a feature film with practically no budget, no crew, all on my own, and giving you some tips on how to go about uh, doing that yourself if that intrigues you. I have a few books right here that have inspired me. This is Robert Rodriguez's uh, memoir, Rebel Without a Crew, on how he did El Mariachi. Um, as you know, he also directed Desperado, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, Sin City, um, Spy Kids, and I could go on and on and on. So he was definitely a huge inspiration in my filmmaking uh, as a filmmaker when I was in film school. Another book I have, it's called Cinema 2.0 Manifesto. This is by a former professor of mine and now colleague, Julian Grant. I got to work on one of his feature films post-graduation and that was awesome. So that like inspired me to create my own content and be able to do it with a micro budget. Um, for me, I had to change the way I went about my filmmaking because now with the advent of YouTube and other streaming sites, uh, there's so many different platforms out there that you could uh, get your work out and not necessarily have Hollywood's permission, you know? So a lot of the things that I'm going to be explaining to you in this particular video today comes from a lot of Julian's work. I am going to put um, a few links for both of the uh, books if that intrigues you and you want to check it out um, in the description below. So let's get to this. Let's first start off with the story. So with the story for me, um, it could be anything. However, let me just give you a background. This is a documentary full feature length film that I'm shooting for a non-for-profit organization that I'm a board member of, Bisexual Queer Alliance Chicago. We're turning in 10 years, October 16th, 2020. So what became potentially a 30 minute video kind of turning into a full fledged uh, full-fledged feature film after finishing up production, you know, um, so I'm gonna go into details on how it is and pretty much, uh, let me know how, uh, I managed to go ahead and create this documentary. Uh, so that's going to be my first pointer. Creating your story, utilize the things that you have available to you. You know, you're going to want to reverse engineer this and think about the things. So right around that, for example, if you have access to a school or a friend's bar that they work at or whatnot, you know, create your story around that and that really helps you out, you know? So, obviously we're making a feature film, so you want to have that story. Um, for me, when I reverse engineer this, I didn't have to really think about it. Um, we're going through a pandemic, so a lot of my story revolved around the interviews that I did via Zoom. I was able to do an in-person interview, which was awesome because it, it created more of an intimate setting, but yeah, I was in between screens so as you see these different samples throughout this video you'll see it the zoom 
interviews, you know? And that was how I was able to base my story. Um, I knew I was gonna be getting interviews and different viewpoints on the history of BQAC from different perspectives. So that was the beauty about it. Um, and post-production, which we're gonna get to towards the end of this video, I'll go into more detail about that. For me, I was used to like seeing all this Hollywood-esque type of gear. You know, you gotta have the red, you gotta have 35 millimeter Panavision, whatever it may be. But with the advent of digital technology, I'm currently shooting this on a DSLR. A lot of my content has been shot on a DSLR. So if you have that, use that or even borrow it. Um, if you don't have access to gear, the best way to go is, like I said, shoot on weekends, get yourself a rental, um, run it on Friday, and then instead of having that one day rental, you're capitalizing on three days in a row. You shoot on Friday all the way into su Sunday, depending on how your scheduling is for this feature over a series of weeks. But it's not always about the gear. Remember, it's about the story that we're sharing. It's the story that we're telling our audience. So your gear to be very minimalistic. You know, for me, um, I have this little $40 light that I use for my lighting setup, along with a few other different work lights that I had. Um, I'm shooting on an under $800 camera. Uh, actually, I think I spent less than 700 at the time. Uh, I have access to lobs, of course. You know, I've built up my gear over time, but it's not about the gear, you know. Um, especially if you're shooting a film, whether it be a feature film or a short film, you know, you could go very uh, minimalistic and I'm a run and gun type of shooter, so I like to have my setups very minimal. It's not always about the gear, you know. Everybody wants to have the fanciest gear. I feel like with you having a very minimal budget, spend less on your gear. Whatever you have available to you, use it. And the rest of your budget, if you are going to have a budget for your film, um, spend that on the cost of wardrobe, whether it's giving $25 to $50 stipend for your cast and crew to have wardrobes, um, and food. You gotta feed your cast and crew, because a hungry cast and crew is never a good cast and crew to work with. You wanna make sure the people that you're working with are well fed, and then making sure that if they have allergies during the pre-production phase, you're discussing this with all the logistics that I'm about to talk about. Um, but yeah, when it comes to gear, you know, if you have red, awesome, more power to you, fuck yeah. But if you have something as small as a DSLR that you can shoot your story, go for it. So we already got our story, next thing is pre-production. Pretty much what's going on is that, hey what's up Boots, sorry I'm busy shooting a video right now, I can't hang out, but we'll hang out in a while. Pretty much, you know, pre-production for me was a ready had the idea where shooting a history documentary for this gala event that we're having on the 16th. Uh, you want to check it out because that's where I'm going to be premiering it. Uh, I'm going to put a link below. I was working this around with my board members, creating ideas. I'm like, okay, I need to find, I need to get interviews with all four co-founders and previous members and board members at large. So that was me getting all those logistics of interviews. Um, that was my own process for pre-production. 
oh, your process is going to be a bit different. You know, you're going to have to, based on your story, figure out your logistics and always prepare for um, the worst, but always prop yourself. So make sure you have all your ducks in a row, you know, what locations you want to shoot, how many characters are going to be involved, and go from there. You know, having practice prior to with both your cast and crew and rehearsals. Um, this doc is a bit different because I'm using real life world illustrations and, you know, it's not a fictional piece. However, going off of that and a narrative feature film that I eventually want to produce in the near future. Um, I'm going to have to take those tips that I'm giving you and apply that to my own feature as I go in the process of shooting that. We're coming into production mode. Essentially, you got everything you need, you have your story, you've already gone through your rehearsals with your cast and crew to make sure there are all on the same page with you, you know. Um, in my case, I really didn't need that because like I said, um, this was a documentary film. So it was all real world participants and uh, going through all that footage later on in post-production, which we'll talk about. But for me, the way production was, was how I shot this was I have a day job and then on the weekends, I would coordinate with people that I would interview um, based on the availability of their own busy schedules, how we would shoot this interview, give them a couple questions that we would go about, and then be able to um, do that and be able to um, shoot the interviews via Zoom. Yours is going to look a little different, you know, you're shooting a story so you want to make sure you have everything that you do need you know um, for production and within production I know just what my experience with Julian we ran into some unforeseeable problems so always make sure that you're prepared for that what's the word I'm looking for improvise you know uh, but with this, it was a bit more clear cut and dry for me, so I was able to edit these interviews easily, you know, because they were all interviews. With your story, you know, and let's just give you a problematic example. You want to shoot a scene in a bar, you know best time to do it would be after hours or before the bar even opens and then having your cast and crew you know all spread out and whatnot and be able to shoot it because you'll have um, more or less less noise and distraction should you have that available to you you know one of the problematic issues we may have is audio. You always, you always want to have great audio, you know. Um, you could have a beautiful visual piece, but you could easily lose your audience with um, crappy audio. So always keep in mind with that. And we're wanting to make sure that, oh, yeah. don't upset the gay people or we don't. Pretty much uh, going through the last segment. And I'm really excited to share this with folks October 16, 2020. So if you're interested in checking it out, please, there's going to be a Zoom link below. And I would love to see you there via Zoom. Don't upset the straight people and everyone has to feel included. Like, no, 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 they, they have their spaces. So now we're getting into pre-production. This is where all your hard work over course of months and 
even years, depending on where you're at with your production, may starts to take life and the editing is sweet. So it's roughly a week from the event. I'm just finishing up a couple different segments that need to be finished up. And this is one of them. Uh, this is stories that we're proud of. And the last segment that I'm gonna end off the documentary with is things we want to improve on. Not necessarily, oh, well, definitely change, but not improve on, but also um, not necessarily an idea of regret, but, you know, things that over the years that we've learned in our 10 years as an organization. So it's been nice cutting all this up. using the hit film but then had some issues with uh, codex and whatnot so I had to go very very old school and edit this all in the iMovie and I'm very fluent in iMovie a bit in the hit film and I've messed around with Final Cut Pro and Premiere regardless of whatever editing platform you're using use one, you know, this is where you're shaping your story and you're getting ready to share it with either YouTube, Netflix, or the world and random distribution processes depending on how you go about with this film. I would edit the film, like I said, how I shot it on weekends and weekdays after I was off the clock and from my day job. So with that being said, you know, treat this as your baby you know we incubated it um kind of like a baby in the pre-production process you know with you cultivating the story getting all your logistics ready getting your gear ready whatever you have available to you and then going into production shooting everything you need and then going ahead and going into the editing suite to get it ready show with the world um <clears throat> this was a fairly easy process what i did was create a paper edit of how i wanted the film from start to finish like i stated earlier in the video you want to reverse engineer so you want to go from the end of your story to the beginning and bring it together okay that's pretty much what i was doing um i just like I said earlier in the video with Julian's work, I used his process of cutting things in reels. For me, with this documentary, I had four sections, and they were all 20-minute segments. With feature-length film, you're looking at 90 minutes the most. So cut up all your reels in increments of 10 minutes. That definitely helps you out. And then once you're able to do that and export it, you could export everything you have in another timeline together because you will have all these reels created and then piece them together cohesively. My pre-production process on this, I like I said, I had to do a paper edit just to see how I wanted to create the film, how I wanted to go about telling all these people's stories with a history of BQAC. So that was the process that I went in regards to that. So I hope you found that um, helpful as you're creating your own feature film on a micro budget with a um, little or no budget and a very minimal crew. You know, I was a crew of one member. It might be a total different story. You know, you might have yourself who's the writer, director, and producer, your cameraman, your sound man, and a few other key elements. Another thing is, you know, have that expectation from your crew that they're going to have to be wearing many hats, especially with this low budget feature film production. We're not doing a Hollywood production, mind you. So I hope 
these little bits and pieces within tree production and tips on how I went about helps you as you're creating your own. So I'm gone, my heart is here. Chicago, you are always near. Midwest, with an East Coast feel. Summertime gets live and the streets go ill. Puerto Rican Day Parade, Humble Park gets filled. Some hoods go wild, other areas chill. A city where you get pimped up by squad cars. From uptown to bucktown, dudes got bars. I might be here today and then gone tomorrow, but my return flight is always destination Chicago. C-H-I-C-H-G-O, yo, where you from? Chicago. C-H-I-C-H-G-O, yo, where you from? Chicago. H-I-C-H-E-O, yo, where you from? Chicago! C-H-I-C-H-E-O, yo, where you from? Chicago! So, so gone, yup, out of my mind But I'm finna go, never out of my grind Hollywood is hype, New York is talk Chicago is work, so I go berserk In the day, in the night, I amaze with my eyes Cause I see what I write, excuse me, write what I see H-I-C-H-E, go No matter where I go, Joe, this is home C-H-I-C-H-E-O, yo, where you from? Chicago! C-H-I-C-H-E-O, yo, where you from? Chicago! C-H-I-C-H-E-O, yo, where you from? Chicago! C-H-I-C-H-E-O, yo, yeah. where you from? Yo, from the city of windy beaches off the Michigan lake, but we unfortunately known as the city of hate. Inside of one of you.